we've got this carpet um, out, we're going to try and um, clean it up a bit. First I'm just going to hoover it obviously and then I'm going to use this um, carpet cleaner with some adapters and stuff and see if I can get this carpet looking a bit nicer and then leave it in the uh, sun to kind of dry out a bit. So first I'm going to hoover it. Right, so I've used the vacuum cleaner just to kind of get up any of the big bits and then I'm using this uh, vax on here to try and remove all these stains. Just a quick go on this bit, it seems to be lifting some of it. Uh, we'll bring all the dirty water into the bottom container. Right, this isn't dry or anything yet, but it certainly looks a lot cleaner um, compared to the other side. It's got all those brown marks around, and I uh, certainly wouldn't drink that for five quid. <laughs> it's pretty rank, isn't it? So you better in mind this carpet has probably never been cleaned. Because, um, you know, who really does that? So I'm just going to keep on going. Um, this thing seems to be working quite well. Uh, you kind of just turn it on, spray uh, with this lever here, and then um, it sucks it all up and puts it in there. I'm no expert with this stuff, but um, you know, just kind of have a go. Right, this is the status so far. Um, it's not getting rid of everything, but certainly looking quite nice now. I'm not too bothered about the rust patches here where the seats bolt up because I mean you're not going to see that but the rest of it's looking pretty good. I need to change the water now because I've got pretty low on the water I've got left. And look at that, that is disgusting. Um, and it's not taken me that long to do it, probably about 10-15 minutes. So I'm going to get some more water get rid of this old stuff and have another go. Right, so that's kind of not dry yet, but all I'm going to do on it. And I've got rid of some of the big stains. There's a big back one here. Someone's put, I don't know, the jack there behind the seat. So this is the front of the car and the rear of the car. Um, as you'd expect, there's quite a lot of filth here. Where Someone's been running without the mat, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Just let it dry now, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. Time's come to put the carpet back in. Uh, you can see it's come out quite nicely. It's obviously not going to be mint, but most of the big stains are out of it. Um, this little sir, um, line here is from where that uh, bit of mat gets stuck to it in the original form but it's obviously long gone. Um, I've still got these Recaro seats which um, have got subframes um, on the bottom to fit into a uh, CRX and they are actually for sale. I know someone messaged me previously about that. Um, I will be selling them uh, so you know if you're local to the Midlands in the UK and uh, fancy some Recaro seats that bolt straight into a Honda CRX Mark II, or probably a lot of other cars as well. If you get different subframes, because um, they're all mounted from the bottom, the subframes are just probably adapted from the original subframe. So they're for sale. Um, this is the car. I've obviously got to put a few things back in, like this um, kick plate for the ECU, and put the ECU back in where it was. So I'll do that first. And, uh, and then we'll get this uh, carpet in and the seats back and all that stuff in. So I thought it was quite interesting about this ECU. It's um, PW ECU and it looks to have been shipped back in, um, I don't know, what's it say? Oh, 12-11-06, so a while ago. It's got a note from whoever did it, some called Matt. I don't know who they are, but... Um, there you go, I thought it was kind of, kind of cool, that's a bit of uh, archaeology. Um, what I'm going to do is just place it back in there um, in the factory holes and then whack this uh, kick plate thing over it and it's just these um, gold 10mm uh, uh, nuts that do that. That's in there like that, so you've got um, one, two, three and four. And this is all the ABS wiring that's no longer on the car, so just tuck that up there. I might actually get a zip tie and whack that up. There, but it's not doing a hell of a lot at the moment, so there we go. Um, that's good. 
and then we've got all these other wires we've got this one um, which is for the handbrake um, so that just wants to go up there but I think you need to pull that round the carpet so I think then it's just a matter of taking any loose bits I found a load of that stuff clips and stuff in the doors so take all that out take everything else that's out um, and then just slide this carpet in here now. Right, to get this uh, little clip out here, you get one screwdriver here, and one down the back, poke it out to there, and then get your pliers to here. <laughs> okay, and then just get it out of that. And then you can get it, um, well, he's trying to help as well, and then you can get it, um, in your side strip and then uh, that retains it in this clip which is actually in the sill here. This is where the clips need to go. There's one there, one there, one there, one there. One's that one snapped so obviously not what's going to happen there. And then um, these little popper things go in here. So you want to try and get that through there to begin with and so this holds the carpet in place. First thing I've done is obviously flop the carpet in here and I'm trying to get it underneath this dash central support and that's why I undid it all before when I got it out. A lot of people just cut the back of the carpet but then it, um, it's not as taut so it's better to do what I did before um, and then you just got to slip it underneath that and feed it in place. A few more things you have to do, you've got to uh, poke this uh, wire for the handbrake cable um, out this little hole there, connect it up, this little spade connector and then um, underneath here, you've got a little uh, connector as well. This goes on here. Um, it's not being used at the moment, but I'll put on the standard uh, bracket and have that as it was sorted. And then you kind of almost there, really, because the carpet's in position. It's through the correct holes. It needs to be. You can just push it all down. You know where, obviously, your seats go, so it gives you a good reference position of where the carpet needs to be. Work on getting these other brackets in. Obviously we took those brackets out, um, which I'll show you. This one and uh, this one. And I'll need to get them both back in there. Um, so this one goes, mounts like that, underneath here. Um, and that's for, the, for this main structure that goes around the driver. Um, and then this one is just that locates the dashboard, the bottom of the dashboard, or the central column of it. In the meantime, I've kind of just stuffed this um, carpet underneath the rear plastic bits, so you can get um, these old things stuck in there. Um, and then to get them out, basically just use two screwdrivers, lever either side, and they come out. And then you can put them back at one, two, three, and four points. And then it's just a matter of placing it in. Some of these little stations for the carpet have ripped, so don't worry about that. You can just poke it in afterwards. And then um, just basically line this bit of uh, plastic in here. There's a lot there. Then under here, it needs to go. Your two hands pull that up. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Yeah. And then under here, I'm just trying to line this thing up here. And just try and get each of those in. Just stuff the carpet in. Like so, and do the same the other side. Bracket can go in here. Um, there's the back of it, at least anyway. And I'll show you. So this is where two of the bolts are, going to the floor. And then the other side goes in there. So it's just three 12 more bolts and just loosely positioned in for now and then I'm going to do the um, ones down to the floor first and then the one the other side, this little bracket to go in afterwards and it just melts behind this uh, lower piece for the centre console. Right, I'm going to really struggle to show you where this uh, first uh, bolt is so you just have to see my fingers there. Watch out behind here because it is actually razor sharp and there's also a lack of space and uh, I don't think you'd almost be able to do this without the um, making a little 
incision in the carpet, which I've done. I have to take it out, but you see I'm kind of doing some kind of yoga move back here. Um, and then the other one's down here. Um, again, I mean, I don't know who did this, whose job it was in the factory back in 1990 to do this, but the job was a bit of a stitch up. And uh, you just watch out because all of these bits of metal behind here, you get the same thing when you take out your um, heater controls. These aren't standard heater controls from CRX. These are just are Civic ones. Um, but it's all razor sharp. And um, if I was going to have a habit of having to take this dash out, I probably would sand all of the little areas down because all of this behind here could easily cut you open. Um, and then the last one is just this one in here. Um, so I'll just quickly uh, nip that one up. As I do that, I'll just quickly talk to you about these heater controls. So, um, what happened was uh, the standard heater controls with the buttons um, it has the slider still, I think. Uh, well, either way, it's different. Um, but th these obviously won't work, but this works because it's operated by cables, and this still works because it's got the same um, plug in the back. But all I've done is put it to um, go on the um, the windscreen, so it's basically there on the electric thing before I took it out, and then you can just turn it off and on, so that's what you really need most of the time, especially in England. Time for all the little stuff. Um, I'm going to start off at the front of the car and work back. Um, there's this little cap thing which goes there, I'll show you that, and this uh, foot rest thing. And that's held on with the two nuts we've got in the box. So first thing is this. Take off that. Put that back here. I'll try and Houdini myself in it. So the first thing is this little peg there. That's what this goes on. That's in there like that. And this foot peg thing. Not foot peg, foot rest. I should say foot peg's a BMX thing. Right, that's in there like that. And these two little 10mm nuts just go in there like that. And you can just get this bit of plastic and kind of clip it in like that. This little thing which slips over here like that. I think this is partially bust, but it'll go back in anyway. And then we have in here, I think that's just a little screw that holds that in. You'll find that amongst the screws. I think it's just a normal screw. Um, I don't think it's like a threaded thing, so put one of these in. This is in, did that little screw up, and then press that in there like that. And then just a little uh, fuel thing there. There's one, and then this one both of those in um, good and then we've got um, this little bracket I knew I'd put it there somewhere two bolts there the faces forward like that there we go so I can just put those in and these just um, have the holes for mounting the screws that hold the centre console in. Thing in. Um, it's probably easiest to put it in now and wait. So you can just clip up this thing. There's no bolts that hold that thing in anymore. Um, they often are dispensed with. So this goes in like that, and you can put this in. And this little clip thing goes the way around. It's annoying because it's snapped. I know what snap here. Um, plastic gets old, it doesn't really matter, you can't really see it. And uh, then, centre console. Obviously, you've got to take the gear knob off for that, put it somewhere safe. This is actually quite a nice uh, body club one that I had on the Civic. I'll just put it on this for now. 
I'm not sure if this is actually the standard length shifter or not, I think it probably is. And then you've got to put this on, and to do that you've got to undo that, because it's got to get underneath that. And then uh, this is definitely a two-handed job, but you first of all put it in one of the gears, which is back. Just feed it in here. So, and you've got to be careful to kind of feed it along and get it past everything so you can kind of push it like that, get over there, okay, but then you've got to push it up a bit and get it past this gear stick. So usually I just put it right way back. There we go. Put it back to a normal position and then it's there like that. And that is in place. So one-handed, left-handed, even better. Um, and then you just got one, two, three, four, five, six little screws to go in to hold that centre console in. And then um, obviously put the uh, gear knob back on. Now I've just got the uh, seat belt to go in, and then this is just a 17 mil. Just check that all of these. Um, spaces are in. Um, I always forget which way around they all go but this is how it was and it's got this little washer but sometimes these washers fly off and these as you take that off these all come spit spinning out so um, this is the setup I've got the washers and stuff and then just make sure it's not twisted as you put it in and then uh, you can just feed it back into the hole there and then just do that up and then once you've done that uh, obviously both sides You've got these um, belts, um, anchors, and then these just go down here, and they're also 17 mil head, which is hidden by this little uh, cover thing that you've got there. Now they're both in, or all in, I should say, with the little covers that slid over all of them. We've got this um, bench seat to go back in, and this, uh, like the Civic, actually, the same generation has these little hooks, and hooks go in the carpet there and there, and it's also got this little thing here which hooks the carpet in as well. So you've got to make sure you hook this little thing. I think you can take this whole thing out. I'll have to get that thing out and put that in place underneath this little thing here, and um, and then hook this um, rear bench in and pull the seat belts through the anchors. You've got that 10 mil behind there as well, then you can just kind of push this all back to where it needs to be. So, like that, pull them like that. You've got the seat belts available. I'll probably just whip them in. I don't know what's happened to these seat belts. Looks like a dog's chewed them or something. But uh, maybe that has or hasn't happened. I don't anticipate having anyone in the back here, so it's all a little bit irrelevant. So, just put them in like that. Here we go. Have them so they're out of the way, whatever. And now, finally, I can just put the uh, two seats back in. And that's just obviously just by these posts. There, there. And someone said uh, one of the Facebook forums and CRX, it's a really good point. Um, that these fail here, so you should check these haven't corroded completely. These don't look in um, maybe amazing condition, but the pictures I saw it was all rusted out. It looked like the actual thing was going to fall out. So that's one. That's the other one. It's these rear posts. So when you do take your seats out, make sure you have a look at these and just check. They're not completely knackered because uh, apparently they fail, and you don't really want that. I think I almost forgot the bonnet release. Um, so that's just up here. Um, two points there. And you've got these little screws. And then the other side, you've just got some little um, plastic um, pop-in uh, screw things. See, it's all in and tight. This one obviously isn't. Um, the first thing you need to do is if you pull this lever up, you can move that peg forward. So, that's like that. And the other one's just free to be pulled forward anyway. So you can just pull that and then uh, put that on each of these, tighten up the 12 mil, bring the whole seat forward, tighten that up, and then you're done. Tilted forward, and uh, 
you can see where you need to put the two bolts. Just make sure it's all nice and finger tight. Same goes for the front. And uh, if I push down on this, um, you can see that will be in the right place. So just finger tight to begin with, and then you can do it up. So I've just put the speaker grills back in. I know I need to buy some more speakers, but um, this is the end result. Obviously, looks really nice. And uh, yeah, really happy with that. It just, this is the carpet, how nice that is now compared to what it was like at least anyway. The smell's gone, <laughs> which is also good. Interior back in.